Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Shate, and we are the Hazes. That right. <laughs> Welcome to the Love Haze Podcast, where we believe that healing and wholeness are not just destinations. That's right. We believe they're a journey. And here on the Love Haze, right here, we talk about how to navigate through it. So today is going to be an awesome episode, y'all. Mm-hmm. We are asking the question, are we going to take this thing to the mat? Mm. Up to the table. What's up? So we talking about resolving conflict today. Mm -hmm. Um, We can choose to take things to the mat where there's a clear winner or loser, Mm -hmm. or we can bring it to the table and try to resolve it in a way that creates uh, compromise and winners for both of us. Yeah. So uh, let's get ready to rumble. (laughs) It's going to be a good one today, y'all. Welcome to our Black Love Journey. Let's get right into it. Let's go. Already. All right, y'all. Let's get ready to rumble. You you set it up perfectly. Where did this come from? Matt versus the table. We about to want to rumble with the B, huh? Um, <laughs> is that what we're doing, or are we gonna you know find a way to to sit at the same side of the table and resolve this in a healthy way? Mm-hmm. You know, we love our black love shows, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were watching Put a Ring on It, Owns Put a Ring on It, uh, recently, and Dr. Nicole she just drops some gems. And no uh, when she said this, I think you were the one that was like, "Hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. let that's a whole a whole vibe." She said the idea is when these couples were arguing over the first dates, right? So they're on this show to decide if they're going to put a ring on it or if they're going to go the separate ways. And and the premise of the show is that they have to date other people to figure out if do I want to stay at home or do I want to mm-hmm. go somewhere else. And um, these folks didn't gone on their first dates. The women went on their first dates. All the men showed their asses. Just <laughs> every last one of them. It was just awful. Um, in terms of their responses, their passive aggressiveness mm-hmm. or di- direct aggressiveness, right. um, it was just, it was a hot ass mess, y'all. And I think she was speaking to that middle couple, the one that like the guy's like super arrogant and I'm not a fan of, um, but he was just like really just degraded his girl when she came back, told her she needed to take a shower and tried to back talk his way out of it. And Dr. Nicole's response, I really wanted her to just like go in on him. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping for some some sort of justice in my eyes, you know, like revenge and get back. But that's that get back spirit you got. It will get it just (laughs) it just feels so much better when she's you know scores have been settled. Mm -hmm. But she really just said, I mean Something to the effect of you could either take it to the mat or to the table. If you're at the mat, then uh, one of you has to lose, which means both mm-hmm. of y'all lose. If mm-hmm. if one of you is losing, your whole unit is losing. Yes. Or you can take it to the table and, you know, sit on the same side, try to come to an understanding and an agreement and a situation where both of you win. Mm -hmm. And I want to step back and say that this doesn't have to just apply to romantic relationships. Absolutely, This could be for parents, children, siblings, friends, coworkers, the idea of like conflict resolution, there's conflict that can arise in any relationship uh, regardless of the nature of it. So, you know, it was really worth unpacking a little bit. Like what does it mean to take it to the mat or to the table? Mm -hmm. Um, So what, let's start here. What is your idea of resolving conflict? What does that mean to you, look like to you? When is it healthy? When is it toxic? Um, There's so many different layers to that to that question. But, you know, to resolve conflict means to me to to bring things to an uh, amicable mm. um, agreement where both parties really get their needs met. Um and even going back to her her idea around um, taking things to the to the mat or to the table, when we're when we're on the mat, we've decided that we're gonna fight, right? You like, go there to fight, right? You go there to fight, and for one person to to win and the other person to lose. And sometimes I think that you know uh, when they're when we're in relationship with folk, I think about my family. I think about with you. Mm-hmm. Think about even relationships at at my job. We are sometimes fighting to get our point across. Yeah, 
uh, and to be heard and seen and seen and all of those things. And when you're on the same team, you don't have to fight. Like we're, we are on the same team, so we don't have to do that part of it. And it's the making a conscious decision to come to the table instead so that we can try to understand each other. Yeah. Um, and so conflict resolution is is a recognition that conflict is a real thing, right? Yeah. Conflict will arise in, in any relationship that you're in yep. because you just have your own ideals about things. Mm-hmm. And it's that I care for you enough to come here and try to understand where it is that you're coming from. Mm -hmm. Uh, You care enough to come here and understand, you know, where I'm coming from. And I don't want to fight. You know, I want us to still be in the same space and to be able to get along and to figure out what works best for everybody. Yeah. So I want to resolve the conflict in a way that works for everyone involved. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to be the winner. Yeah. What does it look like from your, your, Expertise, if y'all don't already know, Mr. Mental Health Professional over here has been a practice, a practitioner of mental health support services for the past 20 some odd years. What does it look like for conflict to be resolved in a toxic way? Like, when is it like, oh, that's that? I don't even know if you can say it was resolved if it's toxic, but what right. does it mean for it to like not go well? I think, you know, um, when when there is a winner, when when I basically, you know, get you to do what it is that I wanted you to do uh, and I and I do it by any means necessary manipulation, whether that means a manipulation yeah. or um, some type of coercion or some type of mm. prodding to, you know, or, you know, making you think that if you don't do this, then that's it. It's over. Like if, if you don't do what it is that I want you to do, then just forget the whole thing and you are um, forced into submission. Uh, and I may believe that that um, the conflict has been resolved. But if you are consistently having to die to what it is uh, that that you want, or even if you feel like you've lost in this situation and you don't have, you know, a, a piece about it or even feel like you you gleaned anything from it. You're just doing the thing because your partner has said, or your family member has said, if you don't do this, then it's a wrap, right? Yeah. That is not, um, it's not really resolution at all. Mm-hmm. That to me says there's some kind of power dynamic at play, right? So mm-hmm. one person exerts or is that the right? Asserts their authority or power or dominance over the other person when you're in the mat, like, so that's where the whole idea of winner or loser comes. If you, you've, you've asserted this, mm-hmm. you know, um, higher status or rank over the other person, which then means I've won and you've lost, um, versus being at the table. We've both been seen, heard, like we are on the same level and the same page from that. Right. Mm-hmm. What are the most, what are the healthiest resolutions look like? I think that's individualized. So, so you gave me credit for um, being a, a licensed clinical social worker or, or mental health professional for 22 years. But I've, I've been uh, me, Scott Hayes, for 44 and a half. So I've had an, an opportunity to develop like the thing, the way that I like for things to go yeah. for much longer than I've had an opportunity to, to, you know, learn the right ways. And um, healthy for me just looks like being able to process through and have the conversation to kind of, you know, come to the table. And uh, I had a relative who used to say, just, you know, uh, lay out the good china and just put the shit out there, <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, Not on the good china though. Yeah, on the good china. <laughs> because that's that's what, you know, real conversations um, look like and uncomfortable conversations. It can, you know, look like it's supposed to be pretty because we're here at the table, but it's sometimes uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's not always pretty. You're you are saying that you know I I want to have this conversation because I I want us both to win. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it ain't always going to be sunshine and rainbows. And yeah, baby, we're going to do exactly what you want to do. Or you know, um, I'm a, I'm going to be able to make this adjustment just because you want it. You know, and it's 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 not that. It's that. Um, I want to hear you out. I want to hear where you're coming from. I want to see maybe where the 
the values mis- mismatch mm-hmm. and also what what brought you to that and how can we you know make some adjustments so we both get what it is that we need or is there something else is there something that we're we've not talked about that is a possibility that will make sure that everybody gets what it is that they need in this space and yeah. that that's healthy to me but is it is defined by each individual in each relationship be it romantic or familial or uh, you know, work or whatever it is, it has to be defined by those people who are in the dynamic of that relationship. What health, healthy is and isn't. Yeah, I think uh, a baseline healthy is, from in my opinion, mm-hmm. where we've accounted for the humanity and the feelings and desires of everyone involved in the situation. Like you've honored it in some way to the best of the ability, everyone's ability. And you said um, something about conflict resolution being hard or, or, or something to that nature. I would venture to say for a lot of people it's probably difficult. Mm-hmm. And what colors that uh, is like how, how you grew up, right? There are mm-hmm. some people where they can just pop off and, and I wouldn't say that it's easy for them to resolve conflict, but it's easy for them to confront things head on. Mm-hmm. That's not the case for everybody, especially like if you think about people who, grew up and didn't see their fam- their parents fight at all, like never mm-hmm. saw what conflict resolution looked like, or if they only saw their people going off on each other all the time, or they saw like people say, like take a passive aggressive approach and that like they don't say anything to the person, but everybody else knows how they actually feel. And they spend their time talking about, you know, the situation behind closed doors. Like there are yeah. all of these things that, that come into play when you're talking about confronting an issue where, someone is offended or hurt or just feels a way about whatever the thing is. And you can really see that uh, going back to the show, like everyone's response was uh, the trigger was some sort of insecurity, which is, is normal. It still is interesting that that is the case when they signed up to go on the show. Like they, and this is not the first season, like (laughs) you've seen, you know, whole other sets of couples do this, but yet, and still we get to the first date and everybody shows their ass, and maybe that's that's the way it's a, the producers have instructed them to do. Um, but you really see like some of the dynamics that are likely in their relationship to begin with, mm-hmm. and then it always has me wonder like how long. You always say people only do what what other people allow them to do. So it's like how long has this person been getting away with this behavior mm-hmm. to begin with? Mm-hmm. There's so many things that come into play about how we show up, but I think it's important to call out that. Just because it's how we were always taught or all, what we always saw doesn't mean that's how it always has to be. We right. have choices as adults to be aware of our behavior, what we actually want, and to make choices towards the better thing. It is, and, and you know, coupled with that is just you know the the idea that we are, we're always like learning and growing and receiving new information. And life and the journey itself kind of requires that we be able to make change. Yeah. So I can't come into this situation and believe that the way that um, I've always done it is going to be the way that it's always going to work. Yeah. You know, there's a different dynamic when you introduce a, a, another person in, into the, into it, the way that they were raised. Help from my siblings, even being raised in the same household, we both received information differently. We both had uh, different experiences with our parents, even though we're in the same household. You know, let me tell it, you know, my my parents were the hardest on me because I was a boy Mm -hmm. and they felt like, you know, the girls needed more support. Um, Let my sisters tell it, though. I'm my mama's favorite and I can get away with, with anything. So, you know. All of that stuff is skewed by your own personal experience. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've gotten even a little bit further, I think, away from the, the idea of fighting fair. Um, and why I think that, you know, fighting fair is, is valid, you know, but what if we escape the idea of even having a fight as if we're, you know, not in the same, mm-hmm. you know, so it. I want to remove the dynamic of having to fight against you anyway. You know, yeah. we can be fighting against those things that are coming against our relationship or coming to destroy our families or, you know, trying to destroy relationship 
uh, and that kind of stuff, even in our work settings and understanding that uh, we're not fighting each other. You know, um, we're fighting against, you know, those external things that would seek to destroy the sanctity of what this is. Yeah. And we say it often and I'm able to recognize it because it's my own stuff. It's control, right? Like in terms of the idea of fighting or resolving anything or the fact that there's an issue to begin with, sometimes, a lot of times, and I'll Mm -hmm. I'll speak specifically about this, put a ring on it. It's about control, like trying to control the other person's actions, trying to Mm -hmm. control a situation that you're in. That's a a lot of conflict. Like you're trying to control an outcome of either Mm -hmm. a person or a situation. It doesn't Mm -hmm. really work like that. Um, So let's talk about you then the person, how have you typically handled conflict? Uh, I, I got my process. Um, typically, I don't do well with new information. Um, you know, I, I have like m- my own way that my life is set up and it is controlled. It is my routine. I'm, I know what's going to happen from day to day. I have that routine. And then when something comes to disturb what my routine is or what has been working for me. Um, there's a process of me having to deal with like that new information. Sometimes it involves like small shutdowns and, uh, you know, times when I'm not able to kind of really formulate my thoughts around how I feel about the new information or, or you coming and saying that, well, you're doing this thing and it doesn't really work for me. And I'd be like, how dare you? <laughs> This is the best relationship you ever been in. You ain't here rocking the boat, talking about I need to do something different. I'd be ready to rattle off everything I've done so you can be comfortable up in here and you in here complaining. So, you know, um, yeah, a lot of times my process is, is a little bit can of a just, shutdown. Can we just be can real? I, can, I just tell, can I tell them? Can we be Wait. real about yeah, how he's absolutely talking about recent occurrences in our relationship? And I appreciate the transparency. Um, yeah, go ahead. But that's just, you know, I, I think my reality is 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 that it exists sometimes. And it, it's not even that I really mean to shut down. I just need a minute with new information. Yeah. Uh, I need a minute to like free myself from the bondage of like you thought you had it all figured out and you don't. So the the there, and and this is why it was important for me to point out that I've I've been me for forty four years, mm-hmm. but I've been a therapist for twenty two. Because mm-hmm. um, that forty four is gonna trump the twenty two every time, initially at least. Mm-hmm. And I need and maybe this is an error in my processing time or something, but I need extra time to insert the things that I've learned Mm -hmm. into who I've been for all of this time and to be able to reconcile the books on those things and make a good decision. Um, And to make sure that I don't pop off in the beginning, just being mad because how dare you question me. Yeah. Um, That, that, and that can be difficult for me, but it's just a part of my process. And I think that you've gotten a chance to kind of know me and know, okay, he needs some time Mm -hmm. and then we'll circle back around to this. Yeah. Thank you for your your transparency, your honesty. I would say there's a lot of, we are a lot alike uh, sometimes and really it's, sometimes it's scary how much alike we are. Um, but the shutdown is probably my first response to, it, it kind of depends if how the conflict arose. So if this is somebody coming to me saying, hey, you did X, Y, and Z, or if it's like in the moment, somebody just says something I don't like, like it just kind of depends mm-hmm. the situation mm-hmm. in terms of response. But overarching similarity is that I also need time to process. So sometimes mm-hmm. it is a shutdown for me because I'm like in my feelings or I need time to just sit with the information. Yeah. How do I feel about it? How do I want to respond? I will absolutely say sometimes I have like reacted and say the first thing that, you know, comes to mind, but in terms I have not of, had that experience with you. I just, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's absolutely my experience. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just like, I'm going to get my point in, but that's a reaction. That's not a response. Right. I'm so dead. when I want to respond, mm-hmm. I withdraw and I can be quiet. I can't even, I don't know how to compartmentalize the way that you know how to do it. So if the, something is bothering me, like you can tell, like I'm not as talkative about a lot of things. And it's not because I'm upset. It's just like I'm actually sitting and thinking about 
Mm-hmm. And I'm replaying, like, is this how I feel? And if this is how I feel, what I want to do about it? And then there's also more processing, like, okay, well, how do I want to say what's, what it is, right? How do I want to say it so that uh, I'm not putting a lot of heat on it? Because I've I've had experiences where I've said what was on my mind and it was heated and it, that didn't go well. Um, so how do I take the heat off of it? How do I approach it so that we're, we're, I'm positioning us on the same side of the table? How can I, like, achieve... Like, I want to be heard and understood and acknowledged for how I'm feeling, but I want to give space for how you're feeling, too. Like, so there's this whole negotiation that I'm, like, processing in my head before I even take it to the response part of the situation. I think what what we have to consider, too, as people, um, sometimes during that in-between when we both are, are... trying to figure out how to respond or processing information that can sometimes be the difference between whether or not I'm ready to head to the mat at a table. Right. Yeah. Because that in between is the time where I have time to develop the story that I've told myself about what it is that you're thinking. Right. Mm. And that story is not always a positive story. But um, whose responsibility is the story? It is, it is ours. Yeah. It is ours. Right. And I think that is a part of like being a better under, um, having a better understanding of your partner, um, having a better understanding of your family member and really mm-hmm. how they get down and the responsibility that we have to each other to say baseline, you know, I'm here with you, you I know, choose you. I trust choose you, you. I trust mm-hmm. you. I want to get to an amicable solution. I need a minute though. Yeah. And so even if I'm in the midst of what I call a shutdown, I still need to give you the information and say, I need a minute. Mm -hmm. Right. And then it's, it's not really a shutdown. Right. It's just like I need a moment to process the information that you understand about your person that you're going to need a minute with this new information, you know, slow processing time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he needs to sit with it for a minute. And so um, I have to take that same kind of energy to my family relationships, which I don't often have the same type of patience for. And um, understanding that at, at baseline, I love my family. I, I want this to go well and I want everybody to win. And I know that they, you know, are going to be them also, but there's room for introducing some new information and um, trying to find a solution that works for everybody. that That's the part <clears throat> I was really just going to address when it comes to, I think it's almost a little easier to have that approach with a partner, especially when we are having, com- we know we're both in therapy and we mm-hmm. agree on values. Like our value systems are the same and we agree on like how we actually Similar. want to, <laughs> we agree on how we want our life to be and look and how we want to resolve things. Like we have affirmations all over the house. Mm -hmm. We live by grace, not perfection. We do second chances here. Right. Like, so we, there is Mm -hmm. like a value system, guiding principles that we abide by here. Right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to family, we grew up with them, lived in the same house with them. But as adults, we all have our own, like um, we're all on our own journeys with what we've learned at, as we were growing up and what we're doing with that information. If we're repeating cycles that Mm -hmm. we've seen, if we've decided Mm -hmm. to change them. So all of that is different. Mm -hmm. And now that we're in different households, we're approaching the world differently. So coming to the table, at least I've seen, you know, even if you're verbal about your therapy and what you're learning and what you need, if your people aren't always there with you, it can be a little trickier to resolve in a way that you feel like works for you. Um, because it's almost like you have to catch them up, or you've got to you've got to find a way to make the adjustment within yourself so you can meet meet them where they are. Mm-hmm. So meeting us where we are is different because we we're on the same journey, like different pace. It's individual as well, mm-hmm. but we're at least on the same path in some regard. Versus like family or friends, it's like you got to translate your yeah. learnings and your thoughts to meet them where they are. Yeah. You know. And and you can only really be responsible for you at that point because there have been some times where um, I've I've been ready to come to the table with my family member, but them Negroes won't take me to the mat, <laughs> right? 
And so I will join you there. That's true. That's and it, a fact. It takes some some big big healing and big energy to be like, okay, bring it back to the table. But you can't control the way other people decide to, you know, um, view what it is that you bring. You know, sometimes when people will be like, he go with that therapy shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, they think he better because he, you know, or yeah. is learning this this other stuff and I don't want to do that. You can't control if somebody has decided that they want to fight in that moment. But you don't have to do what it is that they've decided to do. And, uh, you know, I I know that I am still a work in, in progress. You know, mm-hmm. Mo- Michelle Obama says when they go low. You go high. And what do you say? When they go low, I take it all the way to the floor. The mental health professional. <laughs> this man. That's the 44 years right there. That's not the 22 years. Take and it all the way to the floor. And you like, you, you are such a natural at it. It's like, it just, his, how clever he is, his smart ass mouth. Like, it just doesn't take much to go from like level headed to like literally scrubbing the ground. It does, it takes like, a nanosecond. I was like, how are you there already? That's how did journey. you even think up that thing to say in this amount of time? All my life I had to fight. So that's what it is. Clearly. But no, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've learned to make better decisions. <laughs> um, I, I think sometimes for my, for my family, in particular my sisters, um, sometimes I just be like, <laughs> be, I feel like I've taken as much as I can take. And like the next time that the phone rings, like I'm <laughs> giving her what she called for, and I will I will cuss them out and love them in the same breath because I know we ain't gonna fight for real, you know. It's just like the cuss up, the cuss out has built up to this point. Like it was due two Wednesdays ago, and we finally and, getting here. Yeah, I was gonna say this for the uh, what have you learned part, but that's something actively that uh, me and our therapist have talked about. Like recently, as of the last session, like, mm-hmm. why do you hold in the, in the thing that you're actively feeling? Why don't you disrupt it or say what's on your mind in the moment? Is that a people pleasing thing? Are you doing that saying that you're trying to be a peacemaker, but like who actually suffers because of that? And so mm-hmm. she was like, I need you to think about why you do that and then figure out how to disrupt it. Like, how can you say what you actually feel in the moment instead of holding on to it? Because for me, I'm over here. In my head all the time, just talking through it, like, okay, I felt this way about this thing, but they didn't really mean it. It's, I don't want to make a big deal out of this small thing. I'll uh, mm-hmm. just leave it alone. But then those pebbles build up until finally you're like, okay, listen, if you say one more thing to me, so by the time they've done this tiny thing, you've blown up about all the other little mm-hmm. things that you didn't say. And so I haven't figured that out. I don't have an answer for what that looks like in practice, but that is something that definitely uh i would say i'm working on like how can i just say how i felt about this thing and not be a big thing mm-hmm. i just say it in the moment and move on uh, which could bring us to the haze like what's the haze of you know making the choice to go to the table versus a mat for me it's always going to be like um taking myself out of it uh is the haze is the haze for me uh being able to appropriately remove like my personal, not feelings, because relationships for me are always personal. Yeah. But uh, sometimes I feel like I can be selfish and I make it about me when it's not about me. We all do. Right. That, when when you decide to go to the table rather than the mat. Right. So on, on the mat, I'm fighting for what I believe, what I know is right. Everything that I know is right about the situation. And I'm ready to go to blows with you about that. So you understand, mm-hmm. you know. No matter if I got to, you know, give you a two piece with a biscuit for us to get there, mm-hmm. I'm willing. But at the table, I've removed myself from that situation and said, hey, come sit with me. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about um, not about what you did to me to injure me or how you encroached uh, on my personal belief system, but how we get to a solution that works for both of us not about some injury that you've done, mm-hmm. right? And so I got to remove my selfish ass from the situation and and stop making everything about me yeah. and understand that other people have things that are going on and go back to that baseline of I'm not your enemy, mm-hmm. right? My, my sister is not my enemy. Mm-hmm. She's not trying to do anything 
wrong to me and she's not trying to injure me. She's trying to survive whatever situation she has going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, she just may need her big brother, you know, may need her little brother. Mm -hmm. You know, when I think about it in that way, I'm able to bring more love to the situation. Yeah. And the haze is having to have those spaces happen often and decide how much of like when it's time for me to uh, be unselfish and, and bring my big brother and my little brother to the table. And when it's time for me to establish a boundary that says, hey, don't do me that way. Mm -hmm. Like love me in a different way because that's what I need. Yeah. So finding that balance is, is the haze. Balance is a good one. Definitely taking, removing yourself from it is difficult. I would add, um, I would say just conflict in general is, I don't want to say it's difficult for me because I have no issues addressing something head on, but I'm also, there's this part of me that's like, um, a problem solver, you know that. And so yeah. I will immediately go into solutioning mode because, and I don't know, I, I probably could spend more time unpacking this. Is it because like I have an issue with the discomfort of it not being fixed? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's like just the fact that there is an ickiness is kind of like, oh, that's that's a little bit of a haze. And what can we do to just fix it so it'll be fine again? Mm -hmm. um, what, you know, I love family we're all together laughing and joking but when we're not there i'm immediately like okay how can we get back there yeah. um and so that's my own stuff that I probably i'm sure needs to work through <laughs> and will um and the other thing in terms of deciding to come to the table and I, I, at the risk of sounding like a broken record or beating a dead horse is like what happens when you come with the best of intentions to meet at the table and the other person is like Fuck your table. <laughs> um, who they're not willing to pull up at all. They want to stay in the mat. Like the fact that you can have the best of intentions and wanting to resolve something, and like the other person just be like, "Nah." So, um, for for me, what uh, comes to mind there is, uh, and a, a skill that I've learned to develop is to be able to hold space for people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everybody not going to be ready. Uh, and because I've, you know, uh, I have the privilege of being able to afford therapy and to be able to go to therapy mm -hmm. and to be able to learn some some coping skills. Uh, I don't get to then demand um, my folks who may not have the resources or may not have the um, wherewithal or just maybe have not made the choice for themselves, then I don't have the right to demand this thing of them uh, when it took me going to therapy to get these coping skills. So what I can do is hold some space for you, right? So for me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna love you. I ain't, I'm, I ain't going nowhere, right? My family, I've, I'm, I'm stuck with them. Uh, I don't want to be without them. Mm -hmm. um, I could not be around them uh, if if I made that choice, but I don't want to make that choice either. So, you know, for me, it is better for me to hold space for them and to tell them what it is that I need and to save the space for them to be able to show up in it when they're ready. And along the way, I'm going to drop some nuggets and kind of remind them of some things that are important to me and hope that they can show up to that space at the table uh, when they're ready. I I think that sounds good in theory. In practice, that goes back to the first stage you mentioned in terms of taking yourself out of it. Because then how do I carry on, kiki ha ha with you, and you've like chosen not to address this this issue? Like I'm in, in me holding space for you as, as a person to get to it, however, and whenever is best for you, then, then I am, I am taking from what I need. I'm not getting what I need. And so then, then what? Right. And so I don't know that there's a right answer. I think is is definitely situational depends on the relationship and the people in it, but yes, I agree. Hold space. And how does that look when, giving the space means only one person is getting what they need. So there, there are, so two things can be true at once for me. So I can hold space for you and also set boundaries for you so that I'm not injured in whatever it is that you have mm -hmm. going on that, you know, is not allowing you to show up at the table. I'm going to be at the table. Mm -hmm. Right. 
I'm not going to go to the mat because you are not ready. Mm-hmm. I'll hold this space at the table for you. And so, yes, I'll hold this space for you. And there will be a boundary that will exist in our relationship until you can show up in a way that it works for us. And at least at minimum, doesn't cross this boundary that I have. Yeah. So it ain't got to be that I'm kiki and ha ha. I will make it clear to you that this thing doesn't work for me. And there will be a boundary there for us. And if you should make up your mind and I'll let you know, our relationship could be better if this happens Mm -hmm. or if we're able to talk through whatever this is. Mm -hmm. But right now there's no resolution to that. So our relationship will exist in this space until we can get some resolution that works for everybody. So you can do both. And and yeah, I'm going to hold a space. If you decide not to show up there, then that will be the the parameters and the limitations of our relationship. I don't want that, Mm -hmm. but that is what it will be. And I think that's okay. Yeah. Because I'm not going to lose. And and when I mean that, I'm not going to lose who I am and what I value regarding this thing and how I want to be loved in order to meet you at the mat. I'm just not going to do that. I want to be at the table. I want to be in a place of love and I want to resolve this conflict. I ain't going to fight you about it. I I don't want anything that you don't want to give to me. So I I want to meet there somewhere in the middle at the table and let's figure it out together. Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. And it seems like we've already been talking about how to navigate through Mm -hmm. a number of the hazes that we've uh, both mentioned. Any other thoughts on how to get through, you know, how to get to the place where you're looking for the table and not the mat. <laughs> you asking me? Take it to the floor. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a thought. I, it, it just goes back to choices. Like, who do you want to be and how do you want to show up in the world? I think yeah. that's the bottom line. Yeah. And you make choices. The lives we have right now are because of a culmination of choices we've already mm-hmm. made. And what our lives will look like tomorrow and the next day and the next will be because of choices that we've made. So mm-hmm. how, how do you want to show up in the world? What kind of person do you want to be? And you just have to choose that. Mm-hmm. However difficult it is, if it's really difficult and you're having issues making those choices by yourself, get support in whatever way that you can um, with the resources you have, whether that be a therapist or a family member or a friend or a journal or a prayer Mm -hmm. or whatever it is that you have access to. um, Just try your best to make a choice towards who you want to be. Right. And so I I know that, you know, a lot of our, our prayers and this is where we meet like with the same value system is that, you know, um, we bring love wherever we go. We leave some when we depart the space. And, um, you know, you have to be intentional yeah. about those types of things. Mm-hmm. And, hey, y'all know by now my word for the year is, is intentional. And so sometimes that that means um, they're not being a, a win necessarily, but me deciding that this is the way I want to show up mm-hmm. in the world um, with everything that's been going on recently. All these opinions like scattered across uh, social media, across the news. And a lot of it is is based on people's uh, their own personal morals, their value system and how they've elected to show up in the world. That is skewed and marred by your life experience. So I don't get to say what that is for anybody else. This is how I've decided to show up in the world. And if I have decided to show up um, from a place of love, and of understanding and knowing that people got their own stuff, so I don't get to decide what right and wrong should look like for them, then that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to uh, be arguing with anybody for any amount of time about how they've decided to show up in the world. Yeah. You know, I will, you know, have a conversation with them about the way that looks for the dynamic of our relationship, you know, between me and that person. Uh, and if we can come to some type of, you know, middle ground there, but not otherwise, mm-hmm. because that's not what I choose to do with, with my time. Yeah. You know, you can choose to show up however you want to. This is how I've chosen to show up. Yep. I get it. You know, with with grace, with understanding, with love, with all of those things. And I don't um, have an inherent need to call you right or wrong for how you've chosen to show up. Yep. 
Cool. What I got. Um, what is the most memorable lesson you've learned around this? Conflict resolution, mm-hmm. Matt Table. A couple of things. Uh, first one is that delivery is everything. Mm-hmm. When you've got how you say whatever it is you're trying to, whatever the message is, like the how of it is just as important. Um, there's so many things around that. Uh, try to take the charge off of my charge. I mean, like, I don't want to be too heated. I don't want to be too sad. I just want to mm-hmm. be able to, to deliver it. I don't want to say like void of emotion, but just like as directly and calmly mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, with understanding, with openness as mm-hmm. I possibly can. I've learned that, and I know you said most, but these are some things that are helpful that I keep in mind. I just want to share them all. Uh, it's useful to go into uh, conversations like that that are a little trickier. It's useful for me to have a goal. Like, so what's what's the bottom line for me? And I try to anchor that goal in understanding. So one approach that I take is to ask questions, go mm-hmm. in with more curiosity. Um, one of the ladies that I work with, she uses this with her son, but it's a- applicable. She was like, I try to get curious, not furious. That's mm, that's a whole that's word. Mm-hmm. And so how can I go into a situation where I'm like, can you tell me more about why you said that? Or what were your, what was your understanding of the situation? Or just trying to uncover their perspective a little bit more Mm -hmm. is helpful and it disarms both of us. Right. Um, so language delivery. So not just the tone, but the word choice that you use, Mm -hmm. try not to make it accusatory or a person Mm -hmm. like you to the, to the person, keep everything about the situation, not about you as a human being. Mm -hmm. Um, and then be, have receipts, like not receipts, but like have facts, like, So not just, well, you made me feel this way and I don't like it, but when you did this specific thing, Mm -hmm. this is how it made me feel because, and I can color it however I want, but like, just be as specific as possible because then I think you can do something with specificity. If it's too Mm -hmm. ambiguous or abstract, it's like, well, then what are we resolving here? You know? Um, Yeah. So those, I know I said a bunch of things, but word choice, Mm -hmm. tone, Curious, not furious, um, and having a goal to for the conversation. Like, I want to leave this I'm just having understood their perspective more, and then hopefully having conveyed to the best of my ability how what they did impacted me, regardless of their intention. Like, this yeah. is this was the impact to me. Mm-hmm. What about you? You said so much, I feel like I ain't got nothing. <laughs> uh, for me, it is the uh, it is setting the setting the tone for the conversation that is to happen at the table. Mm-hmm. And so, even in my mind right now, I'm thinking of like um, when you have uh, dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were little, you know, parents used to tell you to set the table, Mm -hmm. right? So a part of setting the table for me is like giving parameters. So letting you know that, um, Shawty, I come in peace, Mm -hmm. right? I'm I'm not here for the fight. Um, I want to have this conversation so we can both get our needs met. Uh, We have reached an impasse regarding some issue. And... um, at minimum, there is love here. Uh, at minimum, I want you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, at minimum, I plan for us to get sustenance together in this place, mm-hmm. right? So everybody will leave here feeling full. Mm-hmm. And so matter table, I choose table. But the most memorable thing for me and the biggest piece of advice that I have is to, and it's important for me, to set the table. Mm. So people understand that um, where I'm coming from and I'm coming from a place of love and not to bring you here to set you up, to trap you or any of those things or to to try to coerce you into. I want to um, understand and then be understood so we can both get what it is that we need in this space. And I plan for us to do that. You're such a storyteller. 
How mm. dare you think that you don't have a book in you? <laughs> you, yeah, such a storytelling. Mm. That was good. Thank um, you, baby. Well, I appreciate you receiving that. That's mm-hmm. growth too. Yeah. You know, I'm witnessing our whole growth unfold before your very eyes and ears. I deny it as we get on. <laughs> um, so speaking of us, of us uh, music is so us. It's just mm-hmm. there is no us without uh, a tune, a beat, a lyric, a mm-hmm. line. So what's the music for at this moment? So first of all, I need <clears throat> all of my brethren. Is watching this episode, not to judge me. Um, music for the moment is Tiana Taylor. That's not no, it's such a good song though. It's a great song. Uh her she song. She got some tracks and she, she got is. some bars. Yeah. So uh it is Gonna Love Me mm. by Tiana Taylor. And uh she starts off saying, Sometimes we say things we don't mean. Um and no matter what. Um, I'm going to love you. You're going to love me. Mm-hmm. Um, these things happen. There will be conflict. Mm-hmm. Right. But we will find a way to get through it. Uh, and, you know, no matter what, uh, we're going to find our way. We choose each other. Yeah. She has that line, uh, something about overthinking. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, that's that's me in real mm-hmm. life. Like mm-hmm. I can reside in my thoughts um, mm-hmm. <laughs> for forever. So it's amazing track. Yeah. Great song. Great. Just perfect. If you know me, you know, I mess up lyrics sometimes. So I convinced myself that what she said was, and this is dynamic. <laughs> so write this down. In my mind, she says, sometimes we are overthinking and under saying. Mm-hmm. She didn't say that, but that's what she should change it to. <laughs> do the remix. So I'm gleaning from that. Sometimes we overthink and under say, but that's a real thing for me and my personal experience. Uh, cause I can get in my head about stuff and just have told myself a different story and not say the thing. The stories we tell ourselves, we should do a whole episode on just the stories mm-hmm. we tell ourselves because that's, that's a whole word and we've seen it. Do you take it back to put a ring on it? Like they responded based on the stories that they had told themselves mm-hmm. overthought instead of just saying, and Dr. Nicole applauded the one guy for eventually saying like, I just felt overwhelmed. And mm-hmm. She was like, yes. Like, thank you for mm-hmm. finding words for that. And so if we could take Darius and, and Nina from Love Jones. Oh, <laughs> if Love they Jones had just too. said what they were really feeling, do you know what I mean? Instead mm-hmm. of whatever story of the version of the reality they had told themselves. But yes, overthinking and understanding can be mm-hmm. um, detrimental too. Yeah. Thank you for jumping on board with my lyric change. Mm-hmm. Have to, let's yeah. at Tiana Taylor so she knows what she <laughs> needs to do in the future. Uh, I love it, love it, love it. Uh, so again, check out uh, the Love Haze podcast, Music for This Moment, mm-hmm. uh, playlist on Spotify. That they thing banging. All these, all these uh, gems for you. Um, and with that, we're going to close this one out and say... Yeah, it's been a great conversation. Mm-hmm. Really good. Yeah. Like we always say, life will. It's going to likely present you with some haze, Ashada. Mm-hmm. Um, but good news is you have everything you need within you. We all do to navigate through it. Mm-hmm. And there are also the options of God in therapy. Yes. <laughs> you run that up too. But at any rate, you know, you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Um, Keep tuning in to us, man. Join us next time, this time, every time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to navigate it together. We appreciate y'all. We out. Hello.